welcome in. It is day 347 and you're speaking to the Meeples Champion. And today we're going to be going back into a game that I reviewed forever ago. This is going to be a different version of that game. Initially we were here in the Americas, but now we're off with a ticket for Ticket to Ride Europe. Now in Ticket to Ride Europe, the concept still stays the same. We've just got a new map and we're still trying to fill in our different types of destinations. However, this comes with a little bit of change. The start is, at the beginning of the game, you have a much better setup with your routes. Unlike the original game where long and short routes were mixed together, you actually have two different decks, a deck of long routes and a deck of short routes. Every player will get one long route and three shorts and has to keep at least two. In the original game, it was all mixed together. You got three and you had to keep at least one. So I like this because now everybody's going to have a guarantee that they're getting a shot at a big point route and you have to keep two, which is gonna make it a little bit harder for somebody to dodge if they have two things that are just not connected on the board. Therefore, making it a little bit harder for people to try to just make it simple and just go to a corner. However, it also takes away the possibility of somebody having two huge routes that so happen to collide, allowing them to basically finish them, get the longest route, get two huge scores, and guarantee that they should be a winner or very close to it. So I really think this is a big fix compared to the original Ticket to Ride. Now, in the game, again, most of what you're doing is the same. You're still trying to drop down a number of cards to see if you can then grab routes. So if you see there's a spot with four yellows, you need four yellow cards to grab it, or as many yellow cards as you can get and filling in the missing ones with wild cards. If you see that there's a spot that's gray, you can use the same concept, it's just you get to choose the color you're using. The wilds can still fill in there, but you can use yellow or orange or green, whatever you have. Then there's some new ones. For instance, there's now the tunnels. The tunnels say, all right, you're going to drop the number of cards requested. However, when you're done, you're going to then flip over three cards from the top of the deck. If the tunnel requested blue, you're going to count how many blues and wilds show up there, and that's how many additional trains you need. If you don't have those many trains or don't want to spend them, you'll just take back all the cards that you spent, all the trains that you spent, and you'll lose your turn. There's also spots on the board that now require a locomotive, aka a wild card. So if you go to one of these spots, it'll do the same concept of, well, there's four cards. They're going to be green. One of them has a locomotive on it. So you have to use a wild on that one. The others you can use the cards as normal so three greens or two greens and a wild but it's basically forcing you to have a wild locomotive to be included in certain routes and then you now have train stations now the train stations are a two-part the first part is if you need to use them they fill in so that if you notice that somebody has blocked you out and that one of your destinations no longer can be reached you can drop this down along with a card to spend to use it to go on to a city, and you may choose one of the locations. So basically, if you're on a city and there's three different things coming in for routes, you can choose one of them and connect from that to the other using that player's route as if it's your own, allowing you to have the possibility to come in late and say, well, I was really close, but they blocked me out of here. I'm using this to go and connect here. So instead of me losing the you know 19 points from my giant route, that one little connection now is is basically you've made an agreement and they're allowed to use their train and as a result now you can finish your route and instead of losing 19 points you're gaining 19 points however if you can dodge this at the end of the game you have three of these for each one you did not use you get four points so you're incentivized not to use them they're there really just to help cover you in case of an issue that's really it the game is quite simple it still plays the same idea of on your turn, you can either grab two cards, either two face up, two face down, one and one. If you want a wild face up, it counts as both cards. If you got it by luck face down, it counts as only one. Or you can draw three routes. You have to keep at least one, but you can keep all three. Or you can drop a train station. And when it gets to the end of the game and somebody has gotten to two or fewer trains, they finish their turn and then everybody gets one more turn. And that's the game. You count up all your points. You see, based on routes you made, you add. Routes you missed, you minus. Your points based on what you are getting during the game. Your routes for the train stations that you were able to hold on to. And the longest route for whoever has the longest total train route on the board. And you see who wins. 
Well, that's the game, but why don't we jump in? Let's talk our stuff in categories and see where this game lands for us. When it comes to the art, this box, just like its predecessor, is a really nice box. It's one that if you're a train fan, you're going to love it. But even if you're not, I'm not a giant train fan. But I really appreciate the front of this box. And I love the the card art and all the art on the board. This is just one of those games that I think a regular gamer enjoys it. But like kids and families love this art. Thumbs up. <laughs> your components your components are you have your cards they're smaller cards but they're really good they're good quality I've never had my any issue with any of these cards and then on top of that you have all of your trains and now train stations which are all these plastic pieces good quality I've never had an issue with anything breaking in these games tearing wearing thumbs up your price this is expensive it's coming in about 60 and it's one of those games that, yes, you're going to find it everywhere. It's available in every board game store. You're going to find it in Barnes & Noble and in Target and probably at your you know, local Walmarts or any other store. These are always around. It's online. It's a game a lot of people enjoy. And I think that while it may be a little expensive, and I may say choose Ticket to Ride or Ticket to Ride Europe, you're good either way. And because of the bump up in it giving you a little bit more complexity, this is the one that a lot of people kind of lean towards as if you're an experienced gamer grabbing first compared to if you're a less experienced to pick up original ticket to ride then you might want to graduate to this one but for me the price is fantastic thumbs up your difficulty this is a little bit heavier than the original not much it's just these few extra types of routes that you're going to be having a a harder way of getting to the board it's these train stations you're now managing it's the way that they're evening out everybody for having your routes that are initially dealt. For me, the difficulty here says, yes, this is a lot better now for the experience and the experts, but it's still inviting for beginners and kids. I don't see anybody having an issue playing this game. Thumbs up. Replayability. This is one of those games you can get back to the, get to the table repetitively. You're going to play this multiple times in a month. You're going to get this one with family that enjoys the game multiple times in a day. This has no issue with replayability. Thumbs up. <laughs> keys to victory. Your keys are still roughly the same as the original Ticket to Ride. Are you looking to try to get more points by dropping to get the big long routes? Are you looking to try to complete the, the, the bigger six-point or five point spots on the board that pay out big during game? Are you trying to get the longest route? Are you focusing more on trying to block opponents than you are on trying to help your routes, realizing I can go drop on a six spot here, get a bunch of points, but I've just disrupted their whole long route or probably one of the routes they were on. There's a lot of keys to victory. Thumbs up. Is the game unique? I love this game. I do. It's not unique. It's Ticket to Ride with a few extra quirks. And there's a whole load of other expansions and such to this game. This game is really cool, but it's not unique. It's got to be a thumbs down. Overall, what do I think? I think this is one of those games that if you haven't had a chance to play it, you got to try. It's a fantastic version of showing you how games can adopt and adapt and move forward and that you can have a game put out multiple versions and feel like you can own them both or all three or all four i don't have this currently in my collection but it's one i would like to add at some point and it's definitely one of those games that i suggest go and just play it i think that you don't need to play it to buy it but i think that if you want to just go and have a good time go and find somebody that has this game go to a local convention board game store wherever it may be and get this to the table it's a fun game and it's worth your money and it's worth your time well it has been day 347. We've been speaking about the game Ticket to Ride Europe. And you've been speaking to the Meeples Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description. I'll be adding in an Amazon link in case you want to get this game for your collection. And don't forget to jump onto Board Game Arena where you can find me under the name The Meeples Champion. Send me a game request. Send me a friend request. I try to get on a couple times a day. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.